Hello and welcome to the news on the as brought to you from the Anglican Cable Network, Nigeria, ACNN TV. I am Rachel Levin. The primate of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, His Grace the Most Reverend Dr. Nicholas D. Oku, has reiterated his call on being fervent with the work of evangelism. He made this call while in an interview in Vancouver, Canada, where he advised bishops in the Anglican churches in Canada to take heed for themselves first before taking heed for the flock. For the bishops is to remain focused. Temptations abound. One, take heed to yourself. Then take heed to the flock. Because if you care for yourself, half of the problem is solved. If you care for the flock, then they will have steady leadership. The head of the Anglican Church also used that opportunity to advise the clergy and ladies who are missionaries in the mission of the Anglican Churches in Canada. For the clergy, my appeal is wait for God to call you. Don't call yourself. Don't call yourself. And don't allow material considerations to override your uh, 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 calling. Because sometimes some people are called actually by God, but halfway they get mixed up by considering certain things, like the parable of the sower. Some fell among, uh, by the way, some among thorns some on the hard rock, and so on and so forth, and they didn't bring out good fruit. So my advice to the clergy, for them to really bear fruit, is let the word of God abide in you, and you abide in him, and so you will bear much fruit. When you bear much fruit, then the work of evangelism is fulfilled. For the lay, is um, they should not do what is becoming the vogue now in Nigeria, that before you know it, they are in court. They sue people, sue the pastors, sue the bishops, sue the diocese, and so on and so forth. And then there are many things we can do to settle issues. Quite so clear that two people cannot stay together without disagreement, but there should be a more civilized Christian way of resolving issues. So the lady should um, not adopt that approach in resolving their issues. And um, they should lend their full support to the work of evangelism and also full support by way of being present, full support by way of funding it. Because the funding of evangelism is the business of the lady. In an act to appreciate God for his blessings and the gift of elderly people, the Anglican Church of the Transfiguration, Gadua Abuja, led by the Vicar Reverend Canon Emmanuel Imachai, set apart Sunday 27th October 2019 to celebrate the accomplishment and longevity of the senior citizens. Charles Philip Wakolam was there for ACNN TV. He has the report. We are what you have done. We see wisdom in you. We see love in you. Generally, the term elderly is used to refer to persons aged 60 and above and also corresponds to the age of retirement from the Nigerian civil service. Being classified as elderly or senior citizen comes with some anxiety for some as it is usually thought to be associated with ill health, loss of productivity, discrimination, amongst others. In a bid to change the narrative, the canon in Mahai led members of the church to give senior citizens a sense of love, appreciation and accomplishment by dedicating a Sunday for them. It is the United Nations declaration that they should be celebrated. And then the words of our primate, the Most Reverend Dr. Nicholas Oku, that we should ensure that our ministry carries everyone along. We felt the need for us to bring the senior citizens together because they have labored for this country, they have labored for the faith, and this is excellent school 
that they handed over to us. Some notable people to grace the occasion include Mrs. Susan Akiola, wife of the former primate Anglican Church of Nigeria, Venerable Peter Okorumade and wife, Venerable Shegum Majekodumi and wife, retired priests of the Diocese of Abuja. Most notably is Mrs. Adezi Nwafo Rizu, born in 1926, the wife of the first Senate President of Nigeria, Akweke Nwafo Rizu. The sermon of the day was delivered by Dr. Enikalo, a retired domestic and international public health doctor. The church dished out gifts to the elders and afterwards they came for their thanksgiving. God is ever faithful. You are diligent in service, it's always rewarding. And you don't need to hustle about it. Glory be to God. People like us in the service, in the church of God, we never lobby. Those who know us that I don't play to Galadi. There are pearls of wisdom that we need to tap into. Senior citizens have peculiar health challenges and bringing it to the spotlight will enable us to deal with them, both as those who are involved and also people around us. It gives me joy because I lack nothing. God has been faithful, taking care of me, taking care of my children, taking care of my children's children. We have passed through many roads of difficulties and things like that, but we have, it, it's an experience for us that we can carry on to all our children. The celebration ended with a feast for the accomplished senior citizens. In Abuja, Charles Philip Wakolam, ACNN News. Christians have been admonished to have strong faith in God and the cease from looking down on themselves over the challenges they are going through. Because any man created by God has his own time of manifestation. Hence, the need for them to be careful in order not to miss their time. This was stated by the Anglican Bishop of the Diocese of Ishukwato Umuniochi, the Right Reverend Manasseh Okeri during his sermon at the October edition of the Abuja Monthly Diocesan Power Night held at the Basilica of Grace Gudu, Abuja. With a team, Master, we have toiled all night, but at your word. The same boats that these people packed, Jesus entered into it and made use of it to preach the gospel. Which means that there is something in you that can still be useful. You are not altogether useless, no. Because you were created in the image of God. You cannot be useless. Even if anybody has rated you useless, even if anybody has written you off, Tell yourself the truth based on the word of God. That something good can still come out of your life. As long as you are alive, as long as Jesus lives, something good will still come out of your life. According to the cleric, Christians should not give up hope in times of trials and temptation, but instead should hold on to God who is aware of every challenge facing them and will definitely come true for them. I believe and I am convinced within me that Jesus came purposely for Peter. In this program, Jesus came for you. And so you don't need to look around on anybody. He has come for you. And he will encounter you. Peter was not the only fisherman. There were many others. After all, the multitude, we are also there hearing the word of God. But Jesus came for Peter. 
Jesus is here for you. You know, at times, we feel that Jesus does not know us. That he doesn't understand our situations. Some people even feel that Jesus doesn't actually, you know, understand what we are passing through in Nigeria. That if, if God is aware of what we are passing through, that he would have done something. God is aware. God knows you. God knows where you live. He knows your address. Not only that he knows your address, he knows the condition that you are in in that address. And so when he comes, he will come for you. He will just come for you. And this morning, Jesus has come for you. The Supreme Court has struck out a fresh suit filed by the Hope Democratic Party and its presidential candidate, Ambrose Owuru. Challenging the declaration of President Muhammad Buhari has, as the winner of the February 23rd presidential election, the IPS court bowed to hear the appeal afresh following protests by the party that the court's earlier decision which dismissed the appeal was based on the technicality rather than on merits of the law. The apex court struck out the appeal following the dramatic withdrawal of an application praying for the restoration of the appeal to be heard afresh. Justice Oluka Yode Ariola, who led four other justices in a short ruling, struck out the application. Ariola in the ruling agreed that the application of the appellants had been caught up by section 285 of the 1999 constitution and as such no longer has a life to maintain it he however declined to award cost against the appellants as demanded by counsel to the independent national electoral commission yunus usman san and that of the all progressive congress yakubu Mikel san Oworo and HDP had sought for leave of the court to allow them to bring back their appeal, which had been struck out due to errors of filing two notices of appeal in respect of one matter and against the provisions of the law. The Supreme Court of Nigeria has fixed Wednesday, October 30, 2019, to hear the appeal of the PDP and Atiku Obi arising from the judgment of the appeal court. Earlier reported that Atiku and PDP had formally filed an appeal against the judgment of the Presidential Election Petitions Tribunal at the Supreme Court. In the appeal filed by Atiku and PDP, the opposition alleged that the panel of the Presidential Election Tribunal erred in law when they relied on overall interests of justice to hold that the second respondent, President Muhammadu Buhari's exhibits R1 to R26, P85 and P P86 were properly admitted in the evidence. Atiku and his party therefore asked the Supreme Court to set aside the judgment of the tribunal and grant the prayers sought by them. President Mohamed Buhari is scheduled to proceed to the United Kingdom for a private visit after attending the Future Investment Initiative in Ridal, Saudi Arabia. Special advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adishina, disclosed this in a statement where he added that the private visit will last from 2nd November till the 17th of November 2019. Additional had earlier in a statement said Buhari will attend the third edition of the Future Investment Initiative in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, where he is expected to speak about the economic opportunities that abound in Nigeria, the effectiveness of his administrations, policies to improve the business environment and invite investors to the country. These trips come barely two days after President Buhari returned from Russia. Still to come, European Union members agreed to postpone Brexit for up to three months. These and many more after the break. Please stay tuned.
Jai Crowther University admission has commenced. Programs on offer include undergraduate, postgraduate, part-time, HND conversion, foundation and pre-degree in faculties of law, humanities, education, natural sciences, social sciences and management sciences. Our tuition is affordable and payable in three installments. Visit the university website at www.acu.edu.ng for online application, screening and admission letter. Given our state-of-the-art facilities, well-equipped library, decent learning environment and distinguished lecturers, apply now by logging on to www.acu.edu.ng. For details, call 0814-592-0637. Ajayi Kralva University, raising godly intellectuals. Welcome back. Thanks for staying tuned. For more on our top stories, please visit our website at acnntv.com or youtube.com forward slash acnntv. And to be up to date with our news and other programs, download the ACNN app for Android from Google Play Store. And now to the international scene. French President Emmanuel Macron vowed no let up in his drive to implement far-reaching pension reforms despite a looming winter of strikes by union angered by the plan. Macron stated that there will be no complacency or weakness in pushing through the changes, even if risked making him more unpopular. Key French unions have called a major strike on December 5th to protest the reforms that is expected to paralyze public transport and other sectors in the country. Macron plans to implement a universal pension system that will do away with the more advantageous plan enjoyed by workers in a range of sectors, including state transport and utility companies. During his 2017 presidential campaign, Macron had pledged not to touch the legal retirement age of 62 for most workers. The reforms unveiled in July, which would harmonize the 42 different pension schemes currently in place will still allow people to retire at 62 but on a reduced pension a full pension will only be available for 64. European Union members agreed to postpone Brexit for up to three months stepping in with their decision less than 90 hours before Britain was due to crash out with no divorce deal. Nunes' deadline for departure will be January 31st next year, although the other 27 capitals will allow an earlier date if London ratifies a withdrawal agreement before then. The EU27 has agreed that it will accept the UK's request for a Brexit flex tension until 31st January 2020. The president of the European Council representing member states, Donald Tux, tweeted, Tux's uh, social media post came as EU diplomats met in Brussels. Upon leaving the discussions, which lasted for 30 minutes, the EU's chief Brexit negotiator, Michael Barnier, said it was a very short and efficient and constructive meeting. This is the third delay since the UK invoked Article 50 in March 2017, beginning what should have been a two-year exit process. And now to sports stories. President Mohamed Buhari has congratulated the Golden Eaglets for winning their group opening match in the ongoing FIFA Under-17 World Cup. The Golden Eaglets opened the Brazil 2019 tournament with a 4-2 win over Hungary. In his message to the under-17 team, Buhari praised the boys for the determination they showed throughout their first match against Hungary. The Golden Eaglets came from behind twice to beat the Hungarian boys 4-2 in a statement by the senior special assistant on media and publicity, Malam Garbashehu. President Buhari described it as a wonderful display and assured the team of his personal support and that of Nigerians for the entire period of the tournament, while urging the Golden Eaglets to bring home the cup for the sixth time, the president asked them to continue showing their spirit of resilience, saying he will personally monitor their progress.
Manchester United midfielder Paul Pogba has been ruled out until December. Pogba has struggled with an ankle injury since August and has featured just five times in the Premier League this season. United had hoped the France international would return for United's Carabao Cup clash with Chelsea at Stanford Bridge on Wednesday. But Red Devils boss Ole Gunnar Soje has ruled the player out for at least another month. And that's it on the news on the AF. Thank you for watching. I am Rachel Ibun.